Credited with revolutionizing the modern fitness industry, the founder of CrossFit, Greg Glassman, now has 13,000 locations, generating in excess of $4 billion in annual revenue. He joins us now live from Seattle, the first stop in the 2016 CNBC Iconic Tour. Mr. Glassman, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us so early. Good morning, Simon. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what a guy who's built his success on being unconventional in so many ways actually tells young entrepreneurs who want to make it. What do you say on the stage today? I, I want to share with them that uh, there's more to business than making money, that that's not the heart of it, that's not the essence of it. And I think that's uh, particularly true of, of uh, my success, of CrossFit's success. Do you, is your understanding... I mean, people are vociferous about CrossFit. Some would say, uh, perhaps quite accurately, it's a cult, the passion that people have for it. As time goes on, do you understand better why there's that type of emotional reaction to it? What nerve, in essence, you're hitting here? Yes, yeah, Simon, uh, what happens to the people in the CrossFit gym is a, is a, a transformation, I think, of unprecedented uh, value and, and uh, significance. And, uh, to do that in the company of other people, you make quick and long friends, more than friends. It's, uh, it's an important uh, component to what's happening in our gyms. A, a bit like a tribe, I, I guess you could say. Um, I, I very much like. I, I knew you would, an urban tribe. Listen, tell me, I, I read that, the, and I haven't done it, but I know many people who do, that the program doesn't train, uh, change. Whether you're an Olympic athlete or you're a grandparent, you still effectively do the same type of routine, it's just that the intensity or the duration might alter. Other people outside of CrossFit often look at it and say it's dangerous. And I wonder how you now counter yeah. that. I mean, is, is it important that you've kind of devolved each gym to its own legal liability here and for checking as to how people are doing stuff? You know, we uh, my affiliates in the United States are self-insured. We establish a risk retention group. And so we get to see the insurance claims of thousands of gyms. And uh, these gyms, these claims are administered by people that administer for the rest of the industry. So I can easily look right at you and tell you that we're safer than anything else happening in the industry. Dangerous? Well, let's talk about danger. Um, you know, 1.8 million Americans died last year from sitting on the couch and watching TV. That is from sedentation and malnutrition. And so uh, dangerous, maybe to the, to the rest of the industry, I, I think we are a threat, but uh, not to people's well-being. And that's, that's easy to demonstrate. All you have to do is kind of look. You know, we're, we're the fitness program in police academies and uh, military units, spec ops units, where uh, 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 being able to perform, being able to show up uninjured is, is uh, job number one. And so they're... It, there's nothing real there as far as I'm concerned, as far as we're concerned. You did mention that money making is part of it. I know it's not everything to you, but Greg, I'm curious how you approach partnerships like Reebok, for instance, which has long been your partner. It's helped them. Uh, it's not exactly the hottest sportswear company on the block right now. And this whole deal with banning Nike shoes, how are you looking at the sports apparel market and deciding you know, who you want to stick with and, and what makes sense? Oh. Reebok approached us um, with a very simple proposition after everyone else in the apparel industry did, but they hit it from a different angle. They were CrossFitters. Um, banning of Nike shoes, that's ridiculous. I wear Nike shoes. I talk to the people at Nike that are making shoes for CrossFitters. Um, it, that's, there's no there there. Uh, we have the relationship we have with Reebok because uh, the terms were good. The timing was right. Um, we were growing a, an international uh, uh, sport. We had uh, 330,000 people register for the Open, making it the most participated in sporting event in the world. We needed a title sponsor and we need television coverage. And uh, those came hand in hand with the ESPN and Reebok. And uh, I'm proud of the Reebok relationship. I'm proud of the shoe they're making. And uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's uh, money, money is to, to a business like jet fuel is to an airline. Um, the goal isn't to burn fuel. The goal is to get passengers safely and comfortably to their okay. destination. It correlates, but it's not the cause. It's not the root of anything. It, it's great to see you, sir. It's great to meet you. Uh, enjoy the conference. Greg it's Glassman, great to meet you, founder Simon. and CEO of CrossFit. Thank you. Uh, joining us live from the CNBC Iconic Conference in Seattle.